Hey guys, welcome back to another great day. Today we got a special episode for you. Um, it's one week since I've had this thing, so we're just kind of reviewing it and going over it. And you can't see from right here, I've got some uh, drone video for you. Oh god, now it's just going to be obnoxious. Anywho, I got some drone video for you. I'm up on top of a hill. I didn't think this through when I came up here because my vis visibility is so poor out of this thing. I can't really see the road and I'm kind of straddling on top of a crest. So it's making this a very interesting trip. So let's see if we can get down the hill in one piece. Also, it's terribly sandy. I love this thing. Hey guys, so I'm a firm believer that everybody should always have a drone with them when they're out off-roading. You never know what you're going to come across that you might want to see. You never know when you might want to use it for recon or for like right there. I didn't have a spotter. A spotter was really nice, so I just took my drone up, mounted up my phone over here so I could see, and I had my own spotter. But, anywho, back to the planned episode here. So we're out near Painted Canyon and there are a whole bunch of little off-road trails and stuff. Nothing major, but some fun stuff like that little ridge line there. And actually the ridge line hills go all around out here. There's a ton of them that you can go off-roading on. And then there's a few different places around here that are nothing but sand. And then you just have a bunch of dirt, dirt roads. Okay guys, we're stopped out here in the middle of the dirt road because I'm going to set my camera and stuff up. Because let's face it, this is about as American a car as you can buy and we need to go release some bald eagles. Okay guys, so I hope you're enjoying our little just playing around day today. Let's talk about the, owning this thing for the last week. I've spent about $168 in gas. I've drove about 500 and some miles. If that, I think it was about 500 miles I drove. I'm not doing real good on gas. Uh, other than that, let's see, had the transmission problem that we're still having a little bit of. Still not 100% sure on it. The guy thinks it's the Sprag gear, but I've got other friends that have told me that if it was the Sprag gear, it would feel like I had the e-brake on or it'd be dragging a little bit more or something. And there's no drag and it's pretty smooth still. So it might not be the Sprag gear, but it's something internal in the transmission. Um, we've had a million people come up to us and talk to us about this thing. Everybody wants to know about it. So it's definitely been good for attention. Um, Honestly, it's comfortable. I'm kind of surprised how comfortable it is. Like, I've always kind of liked race seats, but these are, like, surprisingly comfortable ones. The back has plenty of room if you didn't have the big tire, and even with the big tire in the back. I mean, you can kind of see back there where the seats would go if we had the back seats in here. And with that extra area, plus the room around the tire, we have plenty of room for anything we'd want. I mean, hell, the one day I used it to do laundry and got a couple laundry baskets in here. And then, I don't think I showed you when we actually went and did the laundry, but Kayla came along, so we moved the other basket back there. So we had two baskets of laundry, plus Kayla and Nate. And, you know, we've taken it on some longer trips, you know, 100 mile or so, one direction. And we've not had any problems with it on the interstate, nothing on the back roads or nothing. It just goes, and, I mean, it's a little noisy. I've showed you guys that as well. The noise on the road is pretty obnoxious. It's not near as bad once you're off-road. You don't get the tire noise, which that's all just from tires. If you were just going to have this thing be your mall-rated everyday driver and you didn't actually plan on ever taking it off-road, I'm sure you could go get you a different set of rims if you needed to, or even without getting a different set of rims, go get you just a set of street tires and throw on it. 
and you know you'd probably pick up a little bit in gas mileage and you'd also have it be a lot quieter and a little more tame on the road so i mean that is an option other than that i have absolutely loved this thing for the last week and like i mean today out playing around what i showed you i was doing up with the drone and stuff you can't just go do that in a normal car but so far i absolutely love this thing and i hope you guys are enjoying the videos of it but yeah and then um like yesterday well whenever it was i was talking to buddy from uh LA Fighter USA. You just don't get that support with other things. Uh, I mean, if you go get, you make your own pipe buggy or something, or if you go buy, you know, just a kit buggy or anything like that, you're going to have more problems and you're not going to get the support, the support you got through them. I mean, it's just incredible what they'll do. They'll help you with, you know, they'll take the time out of their day to answer your questions. So really, I think I've done a good bit with this thing for the week I've had it. I mean, we've had it in the desert a couple times. We've had it on the interstate. We've had it around town. I've put a fair number of miles on it, and there's no place that it's absolutely horrible. Yeah, it's definitely not made for running around town. That is for sure. The mileage is bad for that. It's hard to maneuver around town in the tight spots. And, you know, it, because of how wide it is in parking spots and you have fat asses that don't know how to park and get themselves out of their own vehicle, people hit it. But other than that, there's just, you know, the problems with it are problems you have to expect, like your gas mileage. Well, you've got a big V8, you've got big tires, and you've got, you know, off-road suspension. You're not getting great mileage. That's just something you're going to live with. It doesn't you know, turn real tight. Same thing. It's not made for that. So once you temper your expectations a little bit and you realize what you're buying, the Rally Fighter is actually very nice. And you might say, oh, well, the interior might be a little better, this, that, and the other. Go look at the Gen 2s. The Gen 2s are infinitely better on the interior than this thing is. And there's a lot of other little odds and ends that are better about them. But I had been waiting a year and a half to find one of these things used. So when this one popped up, I, you know, beggars can't be choosers. It was either buy this one or spend like an extra 50 or 60 grand on buying a new one. And I just didn't want to go that route. So I'm happy with it. And I guess I'm telling you that as long as you know what you're getting into, you would be happy with one too. Hey, I want to thank you all for coming along with me today. I had a good time out driving the car. I hope you guys had a fun time watching me. Uh, this weekend, me and Kayla were going to go and rent a BMW i8 out of LA and drive up at Highway 1. Unfortunately, the Turo app will not allow us to rent any of the i8s because we're not 30 or older. So, once again, people discriminating against young people. But, you know, it is what it is. We're still going to go up and run Highway 1. We're just going to take Kayla's car. So that's what we're doing this weekend. And I hope you guys tune in for that. If you've liked what I've done today, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, guys. Bye.